Hey guys, I am back. Don Rice here, and what you're looking at is <clears throat> the vacuum bagging system. It it was getting a little bit chilly last night, so I came out here and I laid an electric blanket down on top of the part and set it on high. High is not particularly hot, you know, it might be uh, 80 or 90 degrees or something, but uh, it'll help the epoxy to harden overnight and here it is it's the next morning it's about 10 a.m. so it's been in here for more than 12 hours it should be set I'm gonna start uh, breaking it all down go ahead and remove the electric blanket first So we can see the uh, we can see the parts pretty good. We got good detail in here underneath the vacuum. Um, they're warmish, and so let me walk over around the rock around the shop over to the other side there, and uh, I can pull the pull the vacuum. We'll go ahead and turn industrial suck off. It's holding it about 20 inches of uh, mercury. We'll release the pressure. Pull the line. Okay, so the pressure's been relieved. Now, go ahead and pull the, uh, the seal. Remember the dowel, plastic dowel inside a kind of a C-clip. Pull that. Uh, okay. Nothing stuck to the bag. Exactly the way that's supposed to work. I'll go ahead and pull out the um, this kind of plastic mesh material. This allows the air to make its way to the exit port um, when the vacuum pump is running. So this is reusable. Go. The whole mess out. Get the bag out of the way. There we go. Okay. All of the layers right there. So, top layer is uh, a release film. Nothing sticks to it. That's reusable. The next layer is that. Um, um, the layer that soaks up the excess epoxy. It's kind of a fiberglass layer and it comes, up, comes away pretty easy because of the perforated release layer below it right here. There's nothing sticks to that. So that's reusable. And then we have a layer of peel ply. Nothing really sticks to this either, but you gotta pull pretty hard to get it to come loose. There we go. Alright, got a nice looking part there. Flip it over, do the same thing. Release film, rip off this polyester stuff, and you can see, you can see in here, you know, it's, there's quite a bit of resin. I don't know, quite a bit, but there's some resin that has wicked, 
that is wicked into um, this material. And you know, usually that's good because it saves weight. I wasn't really concerned with weight since this goes in the very front of the airplane, uh, and we probably need weight up there. But um, nonetheless, it's still pulling away excess resin, and that's good. Usually, what you're ended up what you end up with is you know just a perfect perfect part you know it's it's all wetted out but it's not floating in a pool of resin that excess resin ends up moving its way out through the perforated release film and um, it gets soaked up by uh, that that material okay so this is the last little layer of peel ply and I can feel that there's actually still a little bit of give in this resin. If you remember what I was saying in the last video that this U.S. Composites resin uh, doesn't set up anywhere near as quick as West Systems. If I had used West Systems this would be uh, you know, rock hard. Uh, but this is still a little bit flexible. Um, so when we look at the edges here, you know, you can see how they bend. It'll take a couple of days for, for that to go away. But it's hard enough to go ahead and um, do what I'm doing. We'll get it out of the, uh, get these parts out of here. And... Um, and hopefully be able to trim them and uh, start, you know, the, and finalize the mounting sequence uh, on the engine firewall. Okay. There's one part. This is the baffle that goes on, that seals up the uh, the bottom side of the crankcase against the cowl. This is the cowl, the inside line of the cowl right here. And um, this lines up with the various um, uh, profiles of the crankcase. Care should be taken whenever you're pulling peel ply because it can take quite a bit of pressure to to pull this. You know enough pressure that you could, you know, you know potentially break the part, and of course that would be bad. Okay. And the thing I'm really kind of looking to looking at is this thing here. So you'll remember from yesterday's video there was a there's two pieces of carbon plate one here one here that uh, I'm using in order to um, stiffen up this skinny little area uh, of the baffle and it looks like it may have stayed more or less in place uh, which is great that's great news so. Um, okay, there you go. That's how we bag up a couple of uh, baffles or any other part you want to laminate. If you want to laminate it, you can just do it on the bench if you want to. But if you have access to a vacuum um, to a vacuum pump, you know you can do it this way. It makes uh, makes the part lighter because it squeezes out the excess resin. It also makes it stronger because it squeezes out the excess resin. And it makes a much tighter bond between the composite, carbon in this case, and the plywood. So, I think that's it for now. Got a bunch of trimming work to do. 
and fitting work and I think those will be about done later.